Good morning. I hope everyone is well this morning. It is a gorgeous day outside. It was nice drive coming in this morning. Missed you guys last week, but uh, do appreciate everybody that uh, took part in the service. Chris Palmer from Gotel. We were at uh, at the beach and we were watching it on on the on the phone, and uh, he did a fantastic job. Thank you to Brian for uh, taking over the announcements for us last week. But uh, wonderful, wonderful service. But again, uh, thankful to be back this week. Looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us. But let's open up in, in prayer this morning. So Father God, again, we are just uh, so grateful, Lord, for just another day that you've given us. Lord, just another day of life to uh, have the opportunity to come to your house, Father, to praise and to worship you. So Father God, we are... Uh, Looking forward to what you have in store for us today, Lord. Just uh, looking forward to the, to the praise and the worship, to the music, Lord. Looking forward to diving in and studying your word. And Father God, I pray that everything that we do today be honoring and glorifying to your name. And Father God, I pray for all the people who are here. Lord, I pray that we all just uh, lay aside all the, the worries of the world today and we just focus on you this morning, Lord. We, uh, we don't get distracted by the things that, uh, that we're trying to take care of in the world. But Father, it's nothing but praising you today. And Father, we do pray for those who are traveling, Lord, those who aren't with us, Lord. Just give them travel and mercies, give them safe. And Lord, uh, we do pray that you just bring us all back together here soon. And uh, Lord, let us all finish up, enjoying our summer. We know school starts back. We pray for all the kiddos there. And Lord, just again, be with us. Lord, let us, uh, let us honor you in everything. Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, Brian did a good job last week. I don't ever do a good job introducing myself. My name is Travis. So uh, welcome to, to Hope. It's, if it's your first time, we appreciate you guys choosing to come and worship with us this morning. Uh, if you have a quick minute, come and introduce yourself. I'd love to, I'd love to meet you and make sure we get a, a gift in your hand today for, for being with us and home folks. Again, it is always good to see you guys. And we will start with some, some announcements. Not quite as many as what Brian had, but pretty close. Pretty close. But uh, don't forget, uh, tomorrow night, uh, evening and prayer here at Hope, uh, one of the prayer pods. Uh, I know we had a really large crowd here last week for that. We're getting close to uh, crusade time, so uh, hopefully those, those prayer pods have started to increase in attendance and number because we've got, to, we've got to cover this event in prayer. So I know that's what we're doing here on Monday nights. It's been great to, uh, to be a part of that the, the couple times I've been able to attend. So don't forget, tomorrow night at 7, uh, come out, be a part of that. You get to meet some new people, hear their, their hearts. It's, uh, it's just a fantastic time together as believers. Also, Christmas in July for OCC. I know we had said that we were going to have all those turned in by the end of July. That was the other day. But uh, there's still a few boxes out there. So again, that if that's something that you wanted to be a part of that you maybe had forgotten about, uh, there are still boxes out there. Go ahead and grab one, take it with you, bring them back. We're going to try to have all those turned back in uh, by the 18th, so two weeks from now. Uh, there's also some filler items on the on the welcome station as well. If you need some some little gifts, little toys to put in there, they're they're out there. But again, uh, the the packing list, all that's there. And then if you wanted to put ten dollars in there to pay for the shipping uh, for Samaritan's Purse, that would be fantastic. But again, that's out there. Any questions? See uh, Terry and Francis for that, or myself. Uh, Revive us Bible study again tonight. This is week three, I believe. So uh, again, that's uh, been, a, been a really good study. So uh, if you've been a part of that, make sure you come out again tonight if you're, if you're available. Tonight at 6, and uh, looking forward to, to hearing some more of that again. Uh, also, tomorrow, uh, Hope Classic Senior Ministry has a late morning with Don Coe tomorrow. So that's going to be fantastic. Um, Don has, a, has several songs that that he's got available, he's going to play and sing along, going to take some requests out of the list, and going to be a great entertainment time, just a great time of fellowship together. And uh, don't forget, if you are going to be a part of that, we'll provide some food. Uh, But if you want to bring a side dish, that would be fantastic. But do remember that is tomorrow at 11.30. So the Hope Classic Senior Ministry tomorrow at 11.30 with Don Coe. Uh, When it comes to the Blue Ridge Go Tell Crusade. We've got several things that are going on. Yesterday was the prayer breakfast. uh, That went on yesterday morning down at the high school in Mount Airy. Uh, But this coming up week, we've got several things that are are coming. I think uh, 34 days or something like that to the crusade, something to that effect. So we are in the short rows. It It is coming up. We'll be here before we know it. But this Wednesday night, Wednesday night, 
like three days from today, Wednesday night, we're going to have a packing party here at the church for our outreach, what we're doing, okay? So if you guys are, are, have been following all this, there's a, there's a large outreach team that is crusade-focused, that has been planning, doing things like that. But here at Hope, we're going to do that as well. Uh, we have committed to go visit a 1,000 homes here in our local community to go and take them a personal invitation with some information in it about the crusade. Uh, within that bag, there'll be information about the crusade. There'll be information about uh, hope. And there'll be information about just Jesus that's in there. But we're going to go visit uh, folks around the community for the next three Saturdays. So this Wednesday night, we're going to pack all those bags. So we're going to try to get 1,000 bags packed on Wednesday. But don't think that sounds too bad because it really won't be. We get an assembly line going, it won't take too long. But uh, we're going to pack those. And then the 10th, the 17th, and the 24th, we're going to go out and we're going to pass these things out. Go door to door, knock on doors, shake hands, talk to people, and personally invite them to come be a part of the crusade. And if we need to go past the 24th, we'll go to the, we'll go to the next one, the 31st, and go and deliver. But we want to get this to as many people as we can so they can listen to the DVDs, they can watch DVDs, they can hear the name of Jesus, and they can come be a part of the crusade. So don't forget that. Wednesday night at 6.30, right here in the cafe, we're going to pack those. Uh, also, next Saturday morning, the 10th, uh, we're going to have the counselor and follow-up training. So if you have signed up through the crusade to be a part of the counseling or follow-up team, you need to be at this event. You need to be there next Saturday morning at Calvary Baptist Church at 10 a.m. Because they are going to train you on what that looks like. How to go and, and follow up these people. How to uh, counsel these folks when they come and make decisions on the nights of the crusade. So if you have signed up for those, you need to go to this training. Everyone who wants to be a counselor must capital letters, must be trained before they can be a part of the counseling team. So don't forget Saturday at 10 for that. Uh, also, next Sunday night, a week from today, next Sunday evening, here at the church is going to be the pre-crusade youth rally. So again, we're expecting upwards into three, 400 kids to be here. Uh, next Sunday night, we're going to be uh, feeding them some food. We're going to be worshiping with them. Our very own Chris Rogers is going to be preaching to them. Uh, we've got a band coming in to play for them. It's going to be a fantastic time. So you guys be in prayer for that, for all the young folks that are going to be here. Uh, I think the age groups on that are from fourth grade to up. So if you are in the room right now and you're fourth grade or older and you want to be a part, tell your parents to come bring you out next Saturday evening. If you are older than that, tell your parents you want to come be a part to come out next Sunday evening. So uh, it's from 5.30 to 8. Uh, I want to challenge all of our kids. Uh, if you're going to be coming to that youth rally next Sunday. I challenge every one of you to bring at least one friend with you. Every one of us knows one friend that doesn't know the Lord. So I challenge every one of you, if you come and be a part, bring that one friend with you. They're going to have a great time, but most importantly, they're going to hear Jesus. So be a part of that next Sunday from 5.30 to 8. Uh, also, we're going to have on the 17th of August, that's not... Uh, Saturday, but that's the next Saturday, so two Saturdays from now. On that Saturday morning, uh, starting at 8 o'clock, we're going to have a benefit pancake breakfast for the Leftwich family. Uh, you guys, most of you know that uh, the Leftwich family, they lost their home and all their belongings in a fire on July 4th. So uh, we're going to go in and we're going to help them out a little bit with some funds. The uh, Hope Seekers Youth Ministry and the Young Adults Class are going to be sponsoring this event. Uh, but we're going to invite folks out that morning for a pancake breakfast for donations. And every penny of it, every penny that people donate is going to go to the left, which is so they can help try to, you know, buy up things that they need, clothes, shoes, those type things, school supplies, everything that they lost in the fire. We're going to be giving them funds uh, so that they can uh, recoup some of the things that they lost. And the last thing on the list, it's not on the slide, but... Uh, Charlie Stanley asked me to mention that uh, on the 10th of August, that Saturday evening, Kevin and Sandy Kipp are going to be up at Utz Campground singing at 7 o'clock. So if you don't have anything going on the, the 10th, which is next Saturday evening, uh, go up to the campground and listen to Kevin and Sandy, and it will be a blessing. If there are any other announcements that you guys have, uh, please let me know. We'll get them added to the list. But again, there's a lot going on in the life of the church, which is always exciting. 
it's good to have things going on in the life of the church. It means the church is thriving and the Lord is moving in great, great ways. Uh, prayer list. Our prayer list stays long. We want to mention and lift up a lot of names here. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Lib White. This is Andrew's mom. Uh, I think you guys, we, we talked about a couple weeks ago, she was diagnosed with lymphoma. She's been down in the hospital all week uh, with a brain tube in. They've been having to drain fluid off of her brain. But that came out yesterday, I think it was. So uh, she's showing some improvement. So that is a blessing. Prayers are being answered. So continue to pray for, pray for Lib and the family there. Uh, we also want to lift up Janice Gordon. Uh, she has been diagnosed with cancer, uh, both in her lungs and her bones. So uh, this is a, a friend of Cindy McMillan's. So uh, do lift her up uh, and pray for uh, healing and, and comfort there. And also want to add my brother, uh, his name's Philip Wilmoth, uh, to the prayer list. He has injured his back pretty severely. Um, so do remember him, lift him up for quick healing, and that he can get back to work here soon. And if there's any others that you guys have, please let me know, and we will get them added to the list. We know that the greatest thing we can do for somebody is pray for them. Amen? So if you've got somebody you need to add, let me know. You know, as I was in here reading this morning, um, you guys don't know this, but nothing worked in here yesterday. I came up yesterday to get the computer going to try to make sure everything was working, and everything was messed up. Luckily, we got it fixed this morning, and everything started working. As I was reading this morning, uh, Psalm 92, in the first couple verses in, in that psalm, it says, It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Amen? It is good to give thanks to the Lord. And sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Church, we need to be singing His praises. We need to be thanking Him for the things that He does. And we need to be singing our praises to Him in every single way possible because He is faithful. Even when things aren't working, when things aren't going right, when technology doesn't do like it's supposed to, He is faithful to do what He has promised us that He will do. So this morning, I pray that we just give Him a little back. I pray that we stand this morning and we just sing and we mean the words that we sing to Him as we go into a time of praise and worship. So you guys stand with me. Do I bow? 
going on this morning and there's so much that Jesus is telling us through scripture I had a conversation this morning with one of our young folks who held me accountable and praised the Lord for accountability even though it don't feel good amen church and I didn't know if this was one of them personal revelations that I'm supposed to just keep to myself or if this is just one of them things that needs to be shared with the church so we're going to go with the church on this one amen <laughs> I did not want to sing this song this morning. Not the last one. That one's a great one. I love it. Sea of Victory. Because right now, I'm not feeling very victorious. I know I have an all-powerful God who loves me and who I serve. But I have been convicted this morning that I'm not serving Him with joy. And from our pastor to one of these young folks, both of them told me the same thing. Very gently, very nicely, and in full love. So I share that with you this morning, church, because in a room like this, don't ever, 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 ever look up here at this platform and think that the people before you got it all figured out and got it all okay and don't understand struggle. And I don't struggle the way that some people do. You know, I feel like I'm pretty blessed and highly favored. But the problem is, is once I take three steps, I'm back in my head again. Full of negativity and disappointment. And some of you who's known me the longest know that, that I've missed a step lately. And I'm not making this about me. I'm just saying that before my church family this morning, I'm going to be the walk and not just talk the talk. Are you with me, family? And I'm also asking that if you need a victory in your life, together, let's trust in Jesus. Amen. You know, and you know, it takes time. It took 40 years for a bunch of Israelites to get their act together and get through a 10 day journey it took Noah a while to build a boat when people who had never seen rain criticized him it seems that serving Jesus comes at a cost we look a little foolish to the world sometimes we look foolish to each other I suppose too but I'm asking us as a church to unite, young and old. I'm asking us as a church beyond these walls to unite. To give each other a break. And to learn to love one another like Christ loved. And love to work together as Christ commands. They talk about that. I believe it's around Acts 2. There's this beautiful church. 
that just believed you could because Jesus said so. I believe that church still exists today because Jesus said so. And I believe that I can still serve Him because Jesus said so. So what's Jesus saying to you today, believer? Or do you need to have faith and make a step? What's Jesus saying to you today, unbeliever? We're not that different from you. We're just redeemed. Because a man on a cross named Jesus said it was finished spilled his precious blood the church says amen now I'm going to sing this song that I really didn't want to because Satan was whispering lies in my ear
sea of victory for the battle belongs to
Well, you know whether we realize it or not, each and every person in this world was born in complete darkness, spiritual darkness, until one day we collide with a holy God of light. And he can completely change who we are and help us do things that only he can accomplish. Have you had that collision with Jesus? I'm thankful that I was one way and now I'm completely different and the thing that happened in between was him this song's called the in-between
Amen. Uh, who I was and who I'll forever be. Oh, I'm grateful I'm not that same man. Amen. Oh, if you can stand here this morning or see here this morning and say the same thing, you need to say amen to the Lord and you need to be praising His name today that you're not the same person as you used to be. I still remember that person, but I'm so thankful that's not who my life is today. Oh, thank you, praise team. That was, that was good. That was good this morning. Church, my heart's full this morning. Amen? I hope you guys are as excited to be here this morning as I am. But before I get jumped in too quick, let's go ahead and dismiss our young people to the back for their lesson. So we got everything. We got uh, lessons in the back for uh, toddlers to pre-K up to fifth grade. So uh, love watching the young people leave. I think I said it a couple weeks ago. I love watching their smiles on their faces as they as they go out. They're so excited to go into to go to their class and get their lesson on the Lord. So, you know, again, I said it a few minutes ago, I'm thankful uh, last week for Chris for being here and for Brian for stepping in and doing the announcements. We had a great week at the, at the beach. It was, uh, it was nice to, to get away and relax just for a little bit. So, uh, you know, it's a little different when you're trying to study with the waves crashing. You know, it's a little different, little different vibe that you're getting there. It's, uh, it's, it's nice, but if you guys will think back a couple weeks ago, we, we had a message, a very difficult, very challenging message about putting Jesus first. You guys, uh, if you were here, you remember that. It was one that hopefully, hopefully stuck out to you, but we, we talked about the, the importance of that we just show our love for God in everything that we do. We, we, we give Him every fiber of our being. And then that we diligently, is the word that's used in Scripture, we diligently pass that down through the generations. We diligently teach it to our young people. You know, and then last week, Chris was here, and he preached on allowing God to move in you while you're praying that God move in other people. And it was a convicting message for me. You know, because I spent a lot of time praying that the Lord would get a hold of people like He did of he did with me so many years ago, and sometimes I forget to let him still work in me. That I'm still a mess. That I'm not a finished product yet. That until he calls me home and I get that glorified body, this, this tabernacle that I dwell in today is still just messed up. And that he's got a lot of work to do in me, and not just other people. So it was a very convicting message last week. And this week we're going to look at a, at a message that kind of piggybacks into what I talked about a couple weeks ago. You know, I, I shared that it was our duty, it was our duty, our biblical duty, that we share these things with our kids. We share these with our own people. If you don't have kids of your own, you're an influence over somebody. You have, a, you have an impact on people's lives. And Today we're going to talk about choices. And we're going to look at a very, very familiar passage of Scripture in this. And I hope it opens your eyes up to the choices that we're talking about. You know, when I, when I was studying and I was reading, research says that we make upwards to the ballpark of about 35,000 choices a day. 35,000 choices. We make choices about what time we're going to get up out of bed. We make choices of whether we're going to get up out of bed. We make choices of what we're going to eat, if we are going to eat. We're going to make choices of how we drive. We're going to make choices of whether we're going to text while we're doing so. We're going to make choices of how we respond to somebody when they come at us and they approach us. We make choices of everything in life. But I'm not talking about those choices. Those are trivial, right? Those are important, don't get me wrong. The way that we act and interact with people is very, very important in life. Whether we text and drive is very, very important in life. But the most important choice that we can make in life is Jesus. We all decide whether we want to follow Him or not. We all will make a decision in life about Jesus. Some of us will take and we will choose to follow Him. We will say yes to His calling. Some of us will say no to His calling. And some of us won't do anything at all. But that's saying no to His calling. So this morning I'm going to look in the book of Joshua. 
this morning. In the book of Joshua chapter, I mean, sorry, the, the book of Joshua chapter 24, verses 13 through 15 this morning. And we're going to look at this very familiar passage. You probably have pictures of this on your wall at home. But in this, in this point in Scripture, we're, we're in the point of the life of the Israelite people where they spent the, the 40 years wandering through the, through the wilderness like Stephen had spoken about earlier. It's supposed to be an 11 day journey. It took them 40 years. We know that generation that came out of Egypt had to, had to pass on before God allowed the new generation to, to cross over the Jordan into the promised land. And we know that Moses passed before he ever was able to lead the people across the river and God appointed a new man. The new man's name was Joshua to, to take in, and take that role to, to lead the people across in, into the land which he had promised to them so many years ago. And then Joshua, in this, at this point in time, Joshua's come to the end of his life and he's reflecting and he is talking to the people and he's imploring them, don't forget, don't forget where you came from. He's imploring the people to, to remember the power and the, and the provision and the promises of God that were made so many years earlier. And then we come to our verses. So if you have your Bibles with me this morning, read with me in Joshua chapter 24, verses 13 and 15. And the Bible says, I have given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you did not build. And you dwell in them. And you eat of the vineyards and the olive groves which you did not plant. Now therefore fear the Lord. Serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord! Exclamation point. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites and whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And Father God, again, we are so grateful for this passage of Scripture that you've given us. Lord, we are so grateful for all of Scripture which you've given us. Lord, we know that all Scripture is given divinely by you for our purpose, for our edification, our building up, our reproof. So Father God, I pray today that we not gloss over these words. Lord, again, they are very familiar to us. We've memorized them as young kids. We've got them hanging in pictures on our home, in our homes. But Father, I pray we don't let them become white noise in our lives. That Father, we look at these words and we apply it to where we are today and you're in our walks with you, Lord, that we take your word seriously. Lord, as we talked about earlier, Lord, I, I pray that we, we sang the words of the songs of the, of the worship to you. We, we, we believed what we sang and we sang them seriously, Lord. And I pray right now at this moment that we do the same thing to your word. Lord, we let your word just permeate our bodies, permeate our lives, our hearts, our minds. And Lord, we allow you to work in us. So Lord, I pray that you have your will and your way today. Lord, I pray that this service be all about you. And Father, give me the words to share. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So look with me in verse 13. Look that we were chosen by God. It says, I have given you a land for which you do not labor in cities which you do not build, and you dwell in them. You eat of the vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. You see, God had promises them to this, them, to this land of them so many years prior. So many generations earlier, God had promised this area to these people. He had chosen them as His own, His very own people. He had set them out on this journey through life. Chris preached about it last week. He had, he had taken Abram and he had turned him into Abraham and he had told him, I need you to go. And I'll tell you when you get there. He said, I just need you to go and trust me. And then we know how, how things played out. If you read the, the first few books of the, of the Bible, you know what happened. The, the people came back and they, they came into captivity in Egypt. And the Lord raised up Joseph in, in Egypt. And he put him there for a purpose. And we know that he 
Joseph took and he, he convinced Pharaoh to, to send all the Israelite people out to this certain area, this, this one little area of Egypt, so that they were away from the Egyptian people so that they could thrive as a people group, so they could thrive as a, as a chosen population of God. And then we know that they came in and, and Moses and, and his brother Aaron, they went and they, they talked to, to, to Pharaoh and, and they convinced him to let them leave Egypt and, and to go out and not be enslaved any longer and to take their journey to the promised land. And as we've already mentioned, it was, a, it was a short journey. I don't know how long it would have taken in a car, probably not very long if they'd had cars back then and roads. But we know it should have taken them 11 days to walk there. 11 days. It took them 40 years I think they follow directions like I do. 40 years to get there. And we know that during the, during the time, the people were all about God at first. And then they waned and they faded and their devotion slipped. But God never stopped loving them. God didn't take His hand of favor off of them. God said, you are still my people. And that is still going to be your land. He says, but this population has to has to die out, and this population will go in and inhabit that land. That You will cross over the Jordan. You will go into this land that I have promised you, and you will live in the cities that you didn't build. You will eat of the, of the, of the vineyards that you didn't plant. You will have all the provision that you need, and you put no work and labor into it. God said, I did that for you. And in verse 12, before we get to where we were, the people are reminded that, that God sent a hornet, is what the word is used, in, into the land to drive out the the enemies, to drive out the, I, I say it all the time, drive out all the ites that were in the, in the vicinity, all the, all the ites that were dwelling in that land. God went in himself and pushed them away. And then the Israelite people, they, they come across and they start to inhabit all these different lands, all these different cities. Why? Because God had promised it. God had chosen them from the foundation of time to be his people, his beloved. And he said, listen to me. He said, there's nothing in life that is going to change my calling on your life. There is nothing that happens that will change my plans for you and the things that I have planned for you to do. It might take longer than what you expect. The journey might be more difficult than you expect it to be. But don't lose heart. Don't give up hope. Because I have set all this into, into movement before the foundation of time. Church, do we ever feel like that ourselves? Do we ever feel that because of our own sin and our own disobedience that maybe the Lord has taken His hand of favor off of us? I think Stephen stood right here earlier and shared his heart and was very honest about that. That he felt that maybe he was a little distant from the Lord, that maybe his joy from the Lord was gone. It's not gone. It's there. Never has faded. But maybe it gets pushed down a little bit. Maybe it's a little tougher to find. Because we let the things of the world take over. You see, because of sin and disobedience, it took 40 years for them to complete an 11-day journey. What sin and disobedience do you have in your life as God's chosen, as God's elect, as one who He has called into His family? What sin and disobedience do you have in your life that is preventing you from taking that 11-day journey and not getting that completed yet? There's some of us in here that have been on that 40-year journey for a while. We've been pushing it for a while. We've never come to our Jordan We've never made it to that point in life. We've never, we've never made it to the point where we know we're exactly where God has put us to be. But don't lose heart. You are His chosen people. He has called you by name. If you have taken and you put your faith and your trust in Christ, He has called you by name in to His fold. Right? I love, I love the parable that Jesus gives of the 99 and the 1. You know, it doesn't make any sense, does it? It makes no sense for the shepherd to leave all of these sheep to go find the one that was dumb enough to run off. But you know what? I'm thankful that he came after this big old dummy one day. I'm so thankful that he came after this dumb sheep one day when he was lost and he was running and he was, didn't know where he was. He didn't have food to eat. He didn't know where he was going to find his next meal. He didn't know what was going on in his life. He was consumed of the world. And then one day the shepherd came. And got a hold of him. And said, I love you because you're my chosen one. You're one of my chosen people. Like all these others that, that you know, you're one of my chosen people as well. Won't you come back to the flock? Won't you come be a part of the family? 
And by the grace of God, he changed my heart. By the grace of God, he took all the things that I was doing and took them away and put new desires and a new taste into my mouth. And he put a new thought in my head. Why? Because from the foundation of time, he knew what I was going to be doing. From the time he spoke the words and, and, and the earth was formed and all everything was created, he knew that this lost sheep was going to be running, doing things he shouldn't be doing. But he knew that when the time came and he called me by name, I would answer yes. Church, have you answered yes today? Have you answered yes to him today? Have you realized that you're one of his chosen? That he wants you in his family? And I'm not talking about just playing it. I'm not talking about just saying it. I'm talking about living it, doing it, being it of what he's called us to be. Because there's a lot of people that walk around and claim Christianity. But there's nothing in their life that, pr that produced the fruits of Christianity. That's not judgment. That's just being real. I tell people all the time, I'm not going to judge anybody. That's not my job, but I can inspect the fruits of what they do. And if you're a true believer, if you're a true follower of Christ, the fruits of your works, the fruits of your labor, labor will show that in what you do. But if you're not a true follower of Christ, the fruits of that labor will show us the will. So what fruit are you producing? Scripture tells us about good trees and bad trees, good fruits and bad fruits. Which one are you putting out? Which one are you letting people see? What are you doing? Are you living the life of God's chosen? You see, we've got to remember that we can't build this life of our own. We can't just choose one day that we're going to build this life of a Christian and live it. It has to be of God. That's what he says in Scripture. He says that you're going to cross over the Jordan into this land and you're going to dwell in cities which you didn't build. You're going to eat of the vineyards you didn't plant. We can't just do that ourselves. We can't change our own hearts. Only God can do that. Only God has the power to change who we are. We just have to stop being stubborn and let Him. Maybe you guys aren't as stubborn as I am. But it's hard to allow someone else into your life. Especially someone that you can't see, you can't touch. That's scary. It doesn't make sense. But that's what our faith is. Our faith is knowing that, that God, He desires, he, he wants a relationship with us. He didn't create you just to fill space. He didn't create you and form you in your mother's womb and, and let you roam and live in this earth just to take up space and take up a, a, a place in the pews. He created you for a relationship with Him. It's just whether you want to do it or not. Choices matter. So we saw that the people were the chosen people of God. Look in verse 14. And we can see the charge from God. The Bible says, Now therefore fear the Lord. Serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. You see, God has chosen us. He has called us. And now in this verse, he is charging us into what we should be doing. He is imploring us to go and to do the things that he's asking us to do. You see this word fear that he says here when he says, Now therefore fear the Lord. It's the exact same word that we talked about two weeks ago in Deuteronomy 6 when it says to fear the Lord. It doesn't mean to dread the Lord. It doesn't mean to be afraid of the Lord. It means to respect the Lord. It means to have a, a healthy desire for the Lord. And he says, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Church, we've got to respect our Maker. We've got to respect God. We've got to honor Him enough to give Him ourselves and, and to honor Him and to, and to live our lives that are serving in sincerity and in truth. You see, I think we've got people today that, that go through life and they, they proclaim Christianity. They even do works in the name of Christianity. But they're doing it for one reason, and that's to bring glory to themselves. 
There's too many folks out here today that, that want to go and do things in the name of Christ, and then they want to go to Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is. I don't even know all the names of all these things. But they want to put it out there so that everybody can see all the good that they do so that they can get honor and they can get glory for that. I think we read about that in Scripture too. When it says that those will get their reward on earth. The ones that are seeking it on earth. And those of us who aren't seeking earth will get our glory in heaven. We'll get our rewards in heaven. See, church, we've got to go out and we've got to be sincere in what we do. We've got to do these things because why? Because we love the Lord. He has called us to do it. We've got to go and do these things, to do works for Him, to, to go out and knock on a thousand doors, to deliver them bags and invite them to this crusade. We've got to come and pack all these bags and we've got to go and counsel these people that come and make decisions and we've got to come and be, a, be, be part of our youth program to try and serve them, to train them up in the ways that they should go. Why? Because that's what He's asked us to do. That's the charge that He's given us. That's the command He's given us. And why do we do it? To bring honor to me? No, to bring honor to Him. To glorify His name. To lift Him up on high. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's all about Him. And we've got to remember that. He says that we should serve the Lord in sincerity and in truth. And He says that and we should put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. He says to put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river. You see, they weren't all in. They weren't bought in. You know, they'd been given everything that they needed. They'd been told exactly what was going to happen. But I think they're very similar to us. That even when they knew the outcome, they knew what was planned, what did they do? What their heart desired. You know, when you read in Exodus, early, in the early parts of, of Exodus, it talks of when, when God gave Moses the, the Ten Commandments. And he comes down off the mountain and he, he reads and he gives the people the Ten Commandments and they say, and we will follow them all then I think it's the next chapter when they're running the other direction, doing things they shouldn't be doing. We read in, in, in the book of Genesis that it took three chapters in the book of Genesis before man fell into sin. Three chapters. And then sin entered into the world. A chapter and a half of that is creation. And then the next thing you know, in the third chapter of Genesis, man is eaten of the forbidden fruit. We do things out of our own heart's fruition. We don't do things because that's what God has asked to do. Church, what I'm telling you this morning, the charge of God is about Him, not you. He has called you to work and to serve Him for His glory, not yours. And church, we've got to be willing to do that. He says, put away those gods from across the river. He says, don't bring that old baggage with you. He says, don't, don't bring that old baggage with you. Don't bring those things that were weighing you down over there. Don't bring those things across the river to this new land. How many of you brought your old baggage with you to this new person? How many of you are here this morning and you've got baggage from a previous relationship? You've got baggage from the previous life that you lived? You've got baggage that you're carrying with you all through your Christian walk? Let me tell you, it's slowing you down. It took the Israelite people 40 years to go 11 days. Your baggage is doing the same thing to you. That baggage that you carried with you across the river is slowing your journey down. And the only way to get rid of it is with Christ. The only way to let it go and leave it is with Him. And that's what He's telling us to do. But, you know, I think oftentimes we, we say we lay it down and but then we cross the river back and we pick it back up. We, we take it and we, we take it across the river and we put it down and we walk back to our houses which we didn't build and then we say, you know what, I, I'm missing something. We walk back across the river and we pick it back up and we say, I, I feel better now that I've got my baggage with me. But in the book of Hosea, he says, in Hosea 9 verse 1, he says, Do not rejoice, O Israel, with joy like other people's. For you have played the harlot against God. You have made love for hire on every threshing floor. He says that you've played the harlot on God. He said that you've cheated on Him. Are you cheating on God today? Are you cheating on God today? Are you picking up that baggage again? You say you laid it down. Lay it down. Leave it down. Trust Him today. 
that he is faithful to do the things that he says he will do. And then I love at the end of the verse, he says, and serve the Lord. And in my version, it's got an exclamation point at the end of it. Serve the Lord emphatically. Serve the Lord with as much enthusiasm as you can. Maybe I'm ad-libbing that, but that's what I read it. The way that I read it is, serve the Lord! That's the way I read it. Maybe it should be in all caps, I don't know. But that's the way that I read it. He says, serve the Lord. Stay true to what He's called you to do. Be who He's called you to be. Don't get caught up in the things of your past. Don't let the things of your past define you. You are a new creation. You are a new person. Let that be who you are. Let that be what you hang your hat on, not the things that you used to be. I'm so thankful that I don't let who I used to be define me today. Because if I did, you guys would never allow me up here. You guys probably wouldn't let me in the door. I think Anthony and I have been very honest with you guys about our pasts. Of the man that the men that we used to be on the other side of the river. But I'm so thankful that He changed that and He brought us both to the new side of the river and put us in places where we could serve Him and serve Him well. Church, let us not forget that. Isaiah tells us in chapter 29, verses 13 to 14, He says, Therefore the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near Me with their mouths and honor Me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from Me. Does that not sound like people today? Does that not sound like people today that are sitting in our churches all across this great country? We say one thing, but we do another. We give lip service to our faith, but our actions go completely against what we say. We say that we honor the Lord, but we don't show that we honor the Lord. It's completely against His calling and His charge for our lives he says fear the Lord and serve the Lord church that's what we should be doing but again we have choices to make and look with me in verse 15 and look at the choice for God it says and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When it comes to choices, he tells us here that choices are daily. He says... Choose for yourselves this day. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Who did you choose today? I pray that since it is Sunday morning and you're sitting in God's house in worship, I pray that today you chose God today. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that everyone sitting in this room made a decision today to serve the Lord today. Right? There's people in this room today and there's people in these buildings all across the country, all across the world that are in these seats today because that's what you do on Sunday mornings. We're in these seats today because that's what my mama and daddy told me to do. We're in these seats today because, hmm, I didn't have anything better to do today, so I guess I'll come to church. I didn't have a golf match lined up today. I didn't have a camping trip lined up today. I didn't have a ball game today, so I guess I'll come to church. He says, choose this day. And guess what, he goes, what he's going to say tomorrow? Choose this day. And guess what about the next day? He's going to say, choose this day whom you will serve. It's a daily decision. It's a daily choice. It's an hourly choice. It's a minutely choice. It's an every second choice of who we are going to serve. And that scares me. Because I know my own heart. And I know that every minute of every day, I'm not choosing God. 
I know that every minute of every day since I became a Christian, I have failed at choosing God. I know every day, when you just take a day in general, and you look at the choices for and the choices against, there's been many, 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 many days that my choices against God outweighed my choices for God. So I'm preaching to myself this morning that it's a daily choice of what we're going to do. And we have to break that down. It says we make 35 decisions a day. My prayer is that 35,000 of those decisions involve Christ. My prayer is that every decision which we make as believers involves Him in some way, shape, form, or fashion. But again, in reality, I know that doesn't happen because I know my own life. I try to make too many decisions for myself. But He says, choose today who you're going to serve. Listen to me, unbeliever. Choose today who you're going to serve. Don't delay. We don't know if we'll get another today. Today may be our last today. Tomorrow may never come. We have to choose right now whether we will serve or not serve. But it's a decision that we have to make. It's a decision that we all have to make. In Hosea chapter 6, verse 4, it says, O Ephraim, what shall I do to you, O Judah? What shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud. And like the early dew, it goes away. You see, I think oftentimes we have these great intentions to choose God today and to, and to serve Him well today, but then like the dew that fades away, so do our desires for Christ. We wake up with great intentions. I'm going to get up today and I'm going to read my Bible today. And then we watch two hours of TikTok reels instead. We go and we say, you know what? Today's going to be the day that I, I'm going to make an effort to talk to somebody about Christ. And then we talk about how many medals that the U.S. has worn, worn in the Olympics. And the words Jesus, Christ, God never come up. We have great intentions, church. But our sinful nature takes over those decisions a lot of times. And they fade away like the morning dew. We can't allow that to happen. We have to be cognizant of what He's called us to be. We have to be cognizant of what He's called us to do. And we had, it takes a concerted effort every single day to do them. But He says our choices are daily. He also says our choices are present. He says, Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods of your fathers whether the gods your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites and whose land that you dwell he says that be focused on today church I said it a few minutes ago I'm so thankful as Stephen saying I'm so thankful that he took that old person away I'm so thankful that he was the in between I'm so thankful that He took that life that was and came and He intervened to make the life that is. And He's saying, that's what is, let's don't forget that. He said, don't go back. Don't let that come back. Don't let those things come back into your life. Listen to me, believer. The things that you were doing before you got saved, don't allow them back into your life. The life that you were living before you met Christ, don't allow them back into your life. When they start to come back into your life, run. Run the other direction. Do not allow those demons to come back and take, take residence back in who you are. Because they're there for one reason, and that's trying to knock you down. I've said so many times to so many people that Satan takes no greater pleasure than to watching a Christian fall. He takes no greater pleasure than taking a Christian who are doing things for him. He puts these negative things in their life. He puts obstacles in their way and he watches them fall because they succumb to the world. 
I don't know if Satan smiles. I don't know, but I would assume that he does at that point. I don't know if he experiences happiness, but I would think that he does at that point. Because he loves to watch Christians fail. Joshua says, don't, don't let that happen. Don't, don't go back to those old ways. Don't, don't be that old person. And listen, there's those of us in here today that are struggling with something that we've struggled with for years. There's those of us that are struggling with, with things that we struggled with before we knew Christ. But when they come up, when they, when they surface, we've got to remember the in-between. We've got to remember Christ was the answer. Christ is the one that took it away initially. He's the one that will take it away perpetually. We have to trust Him with it. We have to trust Him with it. We also see that He says here that our choices are contagious. He says, don't go back and do the things that you did. He says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He says, I'm making a decision today that I'm going to serve the Lord. He says, I'm making a decision tomorrow that I will serve the Lord. He says, I'm making a decision next week that I will serve the Lord. And guess what? It's contagious. My family's coming with me. He says, because of my service and and my desire and things like that, it's rubbed off on my family. They've seen the things that I've done. They've seen the changes that Christ has made. They've seen the calling on my life. And it's resonated with them. They've seen it. They've felt it. They've experienced it. And they've stepped into it as well. Because of the things that happened in my life, my family has seen those changes. And they've made a choice. They've made a decision that they want to do the same thing that I'm doing. And as a family, we're going to serve the Lord. We talked about it two weeks ago. It starts at the top. When it comes to our families, it starts at the top. Mom, Dad, I'm talking to you. It starts at the top. If your kids see you reading the Bible, guess what? They will be more apt to read the Bible. If your kids see you praying, guess what? They will be more apt to pray. If your kids see you serving, guess what? They will be more apt to serve. If your kids see you out cussing and and drinking and doing things that you shouldn't be doing, guess what? They will be more apt to do those things as well. It starts with a personal choice. What do we want people to see in us? Do we want them to see us making a choice and a decision for Christ and living a life that is pleasing unto Him? Or do we want them to see us making choices and decisions for the world down a pathway of darkness that we don't want to go? Everything's a choice. 35,000 a day. For Him or against Him. With Him or away from Him. Which are we choosing? Church, people will notice our decisions. I'll never forget when I when I got saved, I had a bunch of buddies and we would take a couple, two or three times a year, we would take some trips together. And we would go to we'd go to somewhere and we'd take a golf weekend and we'd go play, you know, three or four or five rounds of golf and get a hotel and hang out and, you know, Back before Christ, there was a lot of drinking and partying and things like that. And Then after I came to know Christ and went on a couple of those trips and they would want to play cards and they'd be drinking and I wouldn't want to partake. And I'll never forget, we were at one and we were in Pinehurst and one of my buddies, his younger sister called, whom we went to college with as well, and she FaceTimed him. This was right after FaceTime came out on on phones and no I guess it was FaceTime it was just a phone call it was right when the smartphones came out but she had called him and we were all talking he had her on speakerphone laying in the middle of the table we were all talking and she was like Travis sitting drinking and they were like no she was like I can't believe that she was like I can't believe that Travis sitting partying because I know who Travis was in college and he was the biggest party of us all and I was like well I know Christ now. And I don't have a desire for that anymore. I love my friends. And I 
spending time with them. But that's not the lifestyle that I want to live. And she was like, I just can't believe it. And she talked about that after the fact to her brother. That a decision that I made for Christ would change who I was so drastically. And then they started talking about church. And I know they went and attended church. People notice our decisions. Listen to me, young people. People notice your decisions. When we were at camp, and Avery made the decision to get baptized, it was the talk of camp. Everybody knew it. Everybody, everybody heard about it. Everybody wanted to, to ask questions about it. Everybody wanted to, to get the details of it. People notice his choices. When you're out today at lunch, and the order's messed up, people will notice your choices. When you're driving down the road and somebody cuts you off, people will notice your choices. When you come into church, and maybe your heart's not exactly where it needs to be, people will notice your choices. When the Lord gets a hold of you, and you make a decision for Christ in salvation, people will notice your choices. And they will celebrate with you. And they will rejoice with you. Because they were there as well. So church, we have a lot of choices to make in life. Which ones are you making? Are you making choices for Christ? Or against Him? You know, it's been, been a long time since the Lord got a hold of my life. But I remember it vividly. I remember vividly the life that I lived. That's a memory I wish I could get rid of, but I can't. And as much as it bothers me of the way that I lived and the things that I used to do, even the Lord has taken that and turned it into a good. Because He allows me the opportunity to talk to people who are struggling with some of the same things I struggled with and relate to them and say, you know what, I get it. Like, I, I get it. I was there too. I understand where you are. And we're able to talk about it intimately. So those things that you're carrying on to, that heavy baggage that you're bearing, lay it down. But that memory that's there is okay if you'll allow them to use it for good. Just don't let Satan get a hold of it and twist the picture. So church, I'm going to ask you this morning, what decision does Christ have for you today? Is it a decision to accept Him as your Savior for the first time? Is it a, is it a, is it a choice to, to say, you know what, God, I've not been living my life the way that I need to, and I need to give it all back to you. Is it, a, is it a choice to say, you know what, I need to be more involved in this church because I'm not carrying my weight around here? Is it a choice to say, you know what, I've not been giving back to the Lord some of the blessings that He's given me and I need to put some money in the offering plate today? Is it that, you know what, I have a desire to see people come to know Christ the way that I know Him and I need to get involved with this crusade? But there's a choice that's on your heart right now. Because the way the Holy Spirit works is when He put it in me and I said, what choice are you making today? He put it on each one of you too. That there was a choice that you're holding on to that you're not making with Him. So we're going to sing a song of, of invitation right now. And I pray today that we make the choices with Him today. That we allow the Holy Spirit to move in a great and mighty way amongst us. And that we're just obedient. We're not roaming in the wilderness like the Israelites. We hop the Jordan and we take up residence in His land that He's promised to take. Allow Him to move in your life today. So Father God, again, we are just, uh, we are humbled by You. 
Lord, you do so much for us that we do not deserve. Lord, we are nothing but a lost and lowly people, floundering, wandering through this life, lost, not knowing which direction to turn. But Father, you sent this man named Jesus to come and to to make a way for us to be found. Lord, you sent this man named Jesus to come and to to shed his blood for our sin, Lord, to take the punishment that he didn't deserve so that we could make a choice to be restored to you in a right relationship. So, Father God, today I pray that we all take and we look at our own hearts, we look at our own lives, Lord, and we just take a scan of the choices that we're making. Lord, we take a scan and we let the Holy Spirit take and pick the things that we need to drop, the things that we need to get rid of, the things that we need to release. And Lord, we do it. Lord, allowing the Holy Spirit to pick them out and to show us what needs to change is the easy part. But Father, actually making the change is the tough one. So Lord, today I pray that we are just moving in the direction towards you. That, Lord, we cross the Jordan and we don't come back. Lord, we leave our baggage and we don't go back and get it. So, Father, today I pray that whatever the choices that are need to be made, Lord, we make them. And, Lord, we make them with boldness. We make them with clarity. And, Lord, we make them with, with a heart that is complete knowing that we don't have to pick it back up again. So, Father, I pray that you move in amongst your people today. And, Father, we're going to thank you right now for what you're going to do. Because, Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you just stand as we sing this song.
I can think of a better song to end with this morning. Just give me Jesus. Church, I hope that's a choice that you've made today. Is Jesus. Because it's all about Him, all for Him. And I pray that's the way we leave here today. So again, God bless you for coming this morning, for being here, for making church a priority in your life. Again, if there's anything that I can do for you, just let me know. Reach out. Uh, here to help any way that I can. Uh, remember all the announcements going on. Prayer pod tomorrow night. Packing party Wednesday night. Uh, outreach the next three Saturdays uh, youth rally next Sunday if I forgot something I'm sorry but there's a lot going on uh, don't forget to pray for those that we've mentioned uh, because they need it and church that is a powerful powerful thing that we can do again if there's anything I can do let me know and let's close in prayer so Father God again we are just uh, so grateful for today Lord grateful for the movement of your Holy Spirit 
Father, just grateful for Jesus. And Lord, as the song says, just give me Jesus. And everything of the world, just give me Jesus. Lord, you are sufficient. So Father, today as we leave and we go out into the world, let us remember that. Just give us Jesus. Lord, let our choices that we make be honoring and glorifying in your name. And Father, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.